Hello, we are live. We're recording. Heather Jean here, Confidence Through Cabaret. I'm so glad that you are joining us for this episode of Confidence Through Cabaret, the podcast, because we are going to have such a nice time. I am well, I'm so, I'm so happy to welcome Jennifer Sullivan, who, I mean, we've had conversations before and it's always just so much fun and so, you know, kind of open and 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 really at the heart of everything is all about our confidence stories and and just kind of putting ourselves out there uh, Jennifer is uh, has ghostwriting services, among other things. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about writing books um, and to, and sharing ideas and your knowledge and your stories. Uh, welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. It's so wonderful to have you from all the way from Jen's pen. <laughs> <laughs> Across the pond. Across the pond. Amazing. Where are you today? Um, I am actually at my parents' house, uh, but that's north, that's south of Boston, um, for the time being. For the time being, how long are you there? Um, well, I've been here for a couple of weeks. My mom got sick, um, but she's she's doing much better now, and I'm leaving today. So, <laughs> wow, traveling, traveling. Yeah, well, just just you know, an hour and a half up to Boston. Nice, nice. Well, I'm glad things are getting better, and in, in your mom's. Uh, home because that's, that's helpful. I mean, you, it's it's interesting, isn't it? When when we become adults, because we we spend our teen years wanting to be big and wanting <laughs> to be adults, and then you get there and you're like, oh, I don't like this. At all. No, this is not this is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> No, no. And isn't it funny how, you know, how, how in life we, we're so ill prepared to be adults. Like we go to school to prepare us for like what we need, you know, knowledge and stuff. But, but, but really there's no like life skills school. That's the problem, right? Like they, they don't teach us half of what we need to know. We get, we get to adults and you're like, I'm still like, you know, 20 odd years into being an adult. And I'm like, what? I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> This is yeah. weird. I don't like this. No, no. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. That's cool. We're all perfectly imperfect here. Whereas it's all, do you need to get that? I can just no, feel that's it. Just, I'll, I'll just keep my talking. My father just got a huge, huge, like, old person phone, and it <sighs> rings really loudly. And That's amazing. Yeah, I'm just going to... You can, you go do that. You go do that. I'm so excited to talk to Jennifer because, oh, it's gone. Then. I'm just, I'm so excited because when we were talking about, you know, doing this podcast and we were talking about the, you know, how a lot of the times with, you know, when you're, when you have a stage life, whether that's, you know, uh, social media or whether that's, you know, you're in, in a, um, Zoom call with your team in, in business or whatever it is that you, you kind of, you, we're, we're afraid to, to learn how and, you know, what do I need to do to appear on camera and stuff? And actually, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It's just a camera. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. And, and, you know, and now people have become so comfortable with cameras, you know, from 2020. And then and then now people are kind of like, I don't want to go back to the office. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, ah, so much like, nicer at home. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. So adulting though, I mean, mm. I don't know how we got here, but adulting is hard work. It's not fun. Mm -mm. There's, there's very, I mean, like I remember thinking, Hey, like with my early twenties, you know, well, early to mid twenties, you're like being an adult is awesome. This is great stuff. Yeah. And then you get, you get older than that. You're like, Oh, responsibility. Well, right. and that's the thing. Adulting <laughs> is fun because when you when you're in your early twenties, you get to be selfish and you get to kind of find your groove and go mm -hmm. and do stuff, and you don't worry about the future. And then your brain fully develops, and you start to recognize the whole kind of like the future and what mm -hmm. you're doing now affects the future and all of that kind of stuff. It's so key to realize that. Yeah, and then as life is going on, and certainly in 2020. Uh, then I realized that, oh, we have to deal with all the baggage that we didn't even know we were collecting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now we have to recognize it, figure out where that's coming from, unpick the whole thing, and then try and reparent our own selves. So true. It's Yeah, it, you didn't even realize the stuff that you're, you're taking along with you. And then it gets in the way. <laughs> you're like, wait a second. 
and you don't even realize that it was a problem to begin with. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's something that you picked up unconsciously as a kid from your parents and you just thought that's how it's supposed to be. And then at some point you, it becomes an issue and you're like, Oh, how do I even deal with this? How do you don't even know where to start? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole thing that you can really easily get sucked into thinking that you're supposed to know and you're the only one who doesn't know. Yes. 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 My, um, my, my husband died in 2019. I'm sorry. So I have a whole year ahead of the 2020 thing because I, he died and then I was left in a lot of financial debt. So I had to move. And then I had a car accident while I was moving. And so I had a whole 2019 of not working and I, life was just coming back to normal in 2020. Um, but even simple things like, is, you know, learning how to like plan a funeral. Like I, I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all the experts kept saying, well, you need to tell us your funeral director. And I was like, well, where do I get one of those? I, I don't know. And they were saying, well, we're not allowed to tell you because, you know, that's like a, unethical if we help you choose one or whatever. I was like, well, somebody's got to help me choose one. Yeah. <laughs> but like, where do we, yeah, you, things like that, you don't know anything about until they happen and you have to figure it out at a time where maybe emotionally it's not the best time to be making big decisions. Yeah. You know, I actually have a friend is really cool. He's, st he's starting a business based on like, like as a, as a funeral consultant kind of thing where he takes you through all the process of it. I think that, that that's really useful and people should, there should be more of that around. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But I think we, there's so many things that we don't talk about. Yes. Death being one of them. Death definitely being one of them. Um, anxiety over, I don't know how to be an adult and I, I don't like what's coming up for me, you know, mm -hmm. and obviously there's therapy and there's coaching and there's all those kind of things. But for a lot of people, we don't even feel like we know how to ask those questions or is there shame in asking those questions or, you know, all of that kind of thing. We feel like we should know. Like if we don't know by now, I'm, you know, I'm in my forties. If I don't know this stuff by now, I should be embarrassed that I don't. And how could I even ask? Yeah. 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 And I think, I think, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, makeup and stuff and, you know, how, how a lot of people, you know, we're supposed to, we're supposed to know all of this stuff and we're supposed to, you know, have our look or we're supposed to play or, or, or the, the dreaded question when we're children of, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> right? I still don't know as an adult. <laughs> and then you're like, and so, and so my children are, you know, they, they hit sort of twenties and then they go, I don't know what I want to do with my life. And I'm like, yeah, me too. And they're like, <laughs> That's not helpful. You're supposed to know. Welcome to life. <laughs> no, I don't know. And I, I don't think I had those frank discussions with my parents. Oh, no. No, my parents knew everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then it's no wonder, you know, we're all recognizing this imposter voice in us where we're like, I'm supposed to know. I don't know. I do, you know, and 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 then, and you know, all of these things start to come up for us. Uh, and then that makes us doubt and it makes us hold things back and it makes us not ask the questions that we need to ask or we don't want to look silly or exactly. everyone else has got to figure it out or all that. I spent so many years being so stuck in something like that, you know, and just be like, oh, I can't ask that. I'm supposed to know that. And if I if I if I ask about it, that reflects on my identity as as a functioning adults <laughs> you know what I mean and, and like especially as someone who like kind of identifies with being on the intelligence side you're like I can't admit that I don't know that yeah but the fact of the matter is like you can't know something until you know it and that's true of everybody in the world we don't know any, a thing until we know it right so at some point you have to learn it exactly and you exactly. have to have the confidence to speak up and say, Hey, I actually don't know anything about that because you know about other stuff, you know, about other stuff that yeah. other people don't know about, but this, whatever this is, you don't know about it. Or mm -hmm. if you're in a situation like you were with your husband and you have to find a funeral director, no one knows that stuff when, when the first time it happens, you mm -hmm. know? Exactly. Exactly. And I think, I think, you know, um, 
if you've got people around you that you know like family or or people that you can trust that that can you can ask those questions of then that's one thing but it's really easy to end up feeling really isolated and alone yeah. either because you don't have people around as it, which was my case or you cuz he had no family and i i don't have family here other than my children so so i you know i didn't i didn't know who to ask and then and then the other thing is, you know, we might feel like the people around us are going to shame us or judge us in some way. And we're so afraid of being judged. And I don't even know where that comes from. I mean, that's going to be a societal, like an inborn human thing, right? And evolution, evolutionarily, it does, you need to be accepted by the group in order to, to survive, right? Um, yeah. That... I mean, that would be where I would think it would come from, but it is a big issue. The funny thing about that, though, is that when you come to the other side of that and you're like, who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I mean, I'm not saying I'm always like that in every situation, but at a certain point, if when you can admit to yourself, you're not perfect and you're not going to know everything. And if you look like an idiot, sometimes you look like an idiot and whatever. Like if you can, it's so much easier to be that way. Yeah. It's so much easier. So you know? much easier. Yeah. Yeah. So much easier. I, I do a lot of uh, choreography classes where, you know, I, I attend choreography classes. I'm terrible at choreography. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like I have, considering I'm a dancer, I have no rhythm. <laughs> and I have no ability to remember choreography. So, <laughs> which is absolutely ridiculous. I love but, that. Uh, but, but you know it's it, it it's really just about like it's getting getting out of your your own head and just moving and just that's exactly right you, you know and just having that that freedom and that starts to build confidence and then confidence isn't something you get first and then you do the thing so it's not, you do yeah. the thing and it's momentum mm -hmm. it's like the whole fake it till you make it thing you know what I mean like you just just if you don't have confidence just pretend you do yeah. You know? Or just do it anyway. You just know? do it anyway. Just, yeah. Just just feel that and do it anyway. Right. Yeah. And I I think you know I, I've many times um, wanted to do writing and I and I I know yeah I know that's part of your world. Mm -hmm. I've many times wanted to do it and I I have actually done some writing in in my adult life and I wouldn't have been able to let anybody read it. Right, right. No, that's so, that's very common. That's very common. The good thing about writing, though, is that it is a solitary adventure. And you don't have to let anybody write it, read it. You don't even have to read it. You don't have to read it. You don't have to judge it. Nobody has to judge it. You just write. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you write. It does not matter. Just put it down on paper. It doesn't know. It doesn't matter if it's good. It doesn't matter if it's bad. It doesn't matter if it's like, you know, the worst drivel on the face of the planet. It doesn't matter. No one's going to read it. It's just yeah. You. yeah. But if you wanted to put it out there, if you wanted mm -hmm. to get published, you have to be open to that, right? Mm -hmm. Which means you have to be open to failure. You have to be open to feedback and criticism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be okay. This is true in cabaret as well. You have to be okay with other people not being okay with you. That's yeah. That, and I think that's where a lot of people have a lot of issues. Um, the great thing, like, with writing and, and you want to, if you want to put things out there again, the first things that you write don't have to, like, you don't have to worry about them. You can go back. They're not the final things. It's not going to be perfect right out, out of the gate. You just write the ideas down. I mean, when I write some of the stuff is just like, I, it really is just a sketch of an idea. It's just like, no one's going to, it's not interesting at all. It's just, okay, this is what I want to happen here you know, and then you go back and you revise, you, you know, you go back over it, you have different ideas, you, you come back to it weeks later and you're like, oh, wait a second, this doesn't work here. So I can move it around and, and see how it goes. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect right out of the gate. Um, yeah. You know, and see, we don't see all of that, right? No. So what we <laughs> see is what's published. Right. The and we don't see and yes, you see the end. I mean, People take months or years to write books, you know, in, in, in the end, they're looked at by somebody else and the editor will go through it and make the changes they think they should be made and stuff like that. So it's not like 
you know, even Stephen King doesn't, or I don't know what Stephen, because he lives up in Maine. I don't know why that just came into my head. But um, he didn't just sit down and write the entire thing and then just hand it to the publisher and it's published. You know what I mean? You just gotta get your ideas down there, you know, first thing. And then go from there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then you have to get your head around that whole program that, you know, we're, we're all in some parts of our lives, not okay with other people not being okay. But mm -hmm. that's where the fake it till you make it strategy starts to have flaws. Because if you're faking it all the time, then you, you never get to authentically put it out there. The, um, the, the last part of that, that phrase is the, is the key, I think, until you make it like do it until you feel good. You know what I mean? It, you will feel comfortable eventually. Um, and yeah, you're not going to be faking it the whole time. Just if, if that's what you need to start, that's where you can start. But yeah, yeah I mean, people have a, have a, a large problem um, with being judged by other people. And I do believe that comes from the herd mentality that kept us alive for, you know, hundreds of thousands of years. Um, so it, it is scary to branch off from that, you know, cause there is in your, you know, reptile brain back here, there is that like almost a threat of death, you know, some people can, can get that scared of it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, th and that's why our fight, flight or freeze still exists in us mm -hmm. and, and it's learning to, you know, to override that and, mm -hmm. And, and do it anyway. And I, I think the other thing is, and we, we kind of talked about this before we started recording, was about that how bit, right? So like, you, like okay, uh, my children and also my co-pioneer, Ryan Francis, they, they, they joke about having PTSD about teaching me how to use social media. <laughs> <laughs> and there's probably not even as much of a joke. No. <laughs> Because I, okay, so so this is how basic it got, right? So if you think like, oh, I don't know how to start a Facebook group or I don't know how to, I didn't understand. I still kind of low-key don't understand what the homepage is on Facebook, right? Right, Because I right. have the notifications and I have my little group, like the, all the, you know, where the groups come up and I have where the videos come up and I have all, so why do I need the homepage? And they kept saying, well, that's what other people are doing. And I'm saying, but it's my home. Right, right. <laughs> Right, I'm, this with, is my you. I'm with you on that. <laughs> right, like I, why do I care about these other people? This isn't other people's houses. This is my homepage. So why do I need? And they and they kept saying, well, yeah, but it's what other people are up to. Yes, but that's but that makes no sense to me. Anyway, this went on and on and on to the point where I had to for quite a few months not even look at the homepage because it it frustrated me and confused Woo! me so much. And, <laughs> and it's just, it's something so ridiculously simple. But that's how basic my knowledge was. Mm -hmm. And now I feel so comfortable with social media because I didn't have it all figured out. I just, I, I, I constantly am learning and picking mm -hmm. up new stuff. And by the way, if you think you've got it figured out, they go and change the algorithm anyway. So what's the point? No. And then they like update the, the whole look of it. And then you're looking around for what buttons and different yeah. functionalities. You're like, wait, I knew it. Now I don't again. Yeah. Yeah, and so we're all kind of in that boat to some degree, right? right? And, and unless that's your whole, you know, business, and in which case, you know, you, you probably enjoy that. But, but you know, it and and as soon as as soon as some other platform does, Clubhouse, Clubhouse comes along, and then Instagram goes, oh, now we're having rooms. It's like what? I know, I know. It's like please, please, just stop. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that you know that kind of thinking that we have to have it all figured out. Mm -hmm is so it's so limiting to us so like you say just start writing to start and then figure it out yeah i mean well and that's true of anything right that like we were just saying you don't know until you know so you're not going to know all at once either you know what i mean it's not you're not going to pick up a guitar learn a couple of chords and be able to play a stairway to heaven you know what i mean like maybe you will i don't know I don't, i've never played the guitar but <laughs> you know, no, I, yeah, I don't know about that but you know what I mean? Like you, you're not, the knowledge doesn't come all at once. You learn little by little, you, you learn by messing up, you know what I mean? And you, you learn by messing up and, and, and keeping going, you know, yeah. and with writing, you know, I mean, it, it, and I'm sure with a lot of other things as well, if you go out of your way to learn things, you, maybe you learn techniques, maybe you go to a class, a creative writing class or, you know, a research writing class or, or whatever the case may be, you come up with your own, eventually you come up with your own way of doing things, you know, that you're comfortable with. 
but yeah. you learn that by experimenting with other people's ways of doing things. Right. And so this is the limitation and flaw of adulting because children don't worry about that. Right. Well, because right. they know that I don't know. I don't know that. <laughs> They'll just ask. Exactly. Or they just keep on trying, right? Mm -hmm. And then I know a lot of people talk about, you know, we wouldn't be able to walk if we just gave up the first time or we're embarrassed or so to so say, how do I do this? Or, you know, we you, we just keep on trying. Right. And I, I think that's such an important thing to do as adults is to just play. I, mm -hmm. I, I argue with people all the time that, you know, I for me, play is a value. Oh, yeah. And I don't care if by definition that's not true. For me, it's a value. It is everything to me I, I want to play this is how i end up with pink hair this is how i end up with you know uh ridiculous um you know makeup thing uh, uh, master classes and this is how i end up with you know going to strange places i've never been to and learning about different things uh, because that whole beginner's mind mm -hmm. is so key it really is and it, it makes the world a lot more interesting a lot more interesting you know when you're willing to approach things i mean play serves serves the same goal as, as an adult as it does when you're a kid right i mean number one it's fun and who doesn't want to have fun but number two you 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 get your pink hair and you see if you like it you know what i mean or or you jump out on the stage and like oh god you know you see if you like it it's it's play opens the world you know play makes everything doable it really does. It. I love that you get that because yeah. so many people are like, well, n no, because this is serious and this is business and this is. And I'm like, yeah, cool, but yeah. it's still playful. Yeah. Why can't you still have fun and and learn while you're doing your serious businessy stuff? Exactly. Exactly. And I think I think you know that whole beginner's mind piece. I I go to like really basic stuff. Um, you know, stuff that, that I already have some expertise in, I, I'll join every challenge and every masterclass and whatever, but I go there not going, okay, see what you can teach me. Cause I, know <laughs> I go there going, cool. I know nothing about this sh because I don't know what you're going to share. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like I, um, I was going to this acting this really basic acting, acting class for, um, the technique that I, I learned in college and, I mean, it was a refresher class and the teacher was just like, why are you even here? And I'm like, cause this is fun. I'm like, you know, like let's, it's a big, like you said, a beginner's mind or, or even like a re-beginner's mind, like get back into this, relearn it. I'm going to have a different perspective on it now anyway, than when I learned it, you know what I mean? I'm going to understand something different. It's you're, you're going to get different things out of it. So there's even if, even going back to the basics of something you already know is worth doing. Always, always. I when I when I go to an aerial class, they'll always say, you know, do you know what this is, or have you has anybody not seen this before? And I always go me, and I make them re-explain it because the different instructors, the different night, is different people. That's a good point. Yeah, that's great. Don't, don't be ridiculous. You can totally do this. Like we, you, we, this is this is easy for you. And I'm like, yeah, but I still I, I want to go back and and relearn it in a different way. There might be something I pick up. There might be, you know, so something true. That, a little flourish or something. I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know what it is. Cause I don't know. That's why I want to know. Cause you, yeah. Cause you don't know who knows what, what you'll learn this time around. Exactly. And there really are, unless it's life threatening or endangering anyone mm -hmm. or anything that that's a different thing. But other than that, there are very few things that are really super high risk that, you know, so so obviously Ariel, we go off the off the floor. So there's some risk to that. But if you do it slowly and you do it carefully, yeah. you learn it and you yeah. relearn it. Exactly. And you practice. <laughs> so 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 how did you end up where you are today? What's the what's the story that takes you to today on a Confidence Your Cabaret podcast uh, and Jen's pen? <laughs> well, how like like any other story, it's it, it never ends, right? It's just you start and you end in interesting places. That's that's what a story is, right? Um, so let me think about where the the most interesting place to start is. Um, well, uh, Jen's pen started because I okay. So 
I'm an actor, I'm a, a, an artist, I'm a filmmaker, I'm, I, I'm a very creative person, but, uh, and I was on a pretty good trajectory uh, up until a, several years ago when I got depressed and I kind of just, everything just kind of fell away and I, and I lost it all and I didn't know what to do. I didn't have any confidence, right? I didn't, I didn't think I could do anything. But then last year, <clears throat> COVID came along and we all had a minute to sit back you know what I mean? And like, okay, well, I can't go out. You know what I mean? And they don't want me to go out. So they're going to give me money to stay in. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and I can't, you know, what I was doing, I was doing, I was an Uber driver, <clears throat> just trying to make some money wherever I could. And I couldn't do that anymore. So I was able to stay home and, and do some real soul searching, some real work on myself. And um, I did a lot. I did, a, I got a very, I, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. It was actually very euphoric once you lift yourself out of something like that. Um, but then I got to a point where like, I didn't know how to, like, I knew that COVID was going to end and I'm going to be faced with the same problems as I had before. And I don't know how to deal with them. So I needed to find, find out how to deal with those problems, mainly financial. Um, I'm, I was not, so this is, you also got to be careful with your words. <laughs> I was not, uh, a very financially astute person because they don't teach that in school as they should. Um, and uh, I knew that I needed to find a way to support myself um, come the end of COVID. So um, I one night, I don't know if you're spiritual or whatever, I, I was getting very, one of the big things that was happening was getting very much back in touch with my, uh, my connection to the universe. Yeah. Um, and I was talking to her a lot. <laughs> and one night I just broke down. I'm like, I'm going to have the same problems. Like, what am I going to do? I need help. Just please, please, please help with this financial part. Cause I'm not going to be able to move on in my life. I'm not going to be able to go anywhere. I'm not going to be able to do anything if I can't figure this out. The next day, a friend of mine, um, we went out for lunch and he told me about this group uh, called the Alchemist Nation. <clears throat> That's for real estate uh, investors and entrepreneurs. And I got involved with the group and um, I still didn't know. I mean, I, I had gotten my real estate license and I thought I'd do something with that, but it turns out that I really don't like it at all. <laughs> like, Fair enough. At all. You tried not it. Interested. Tried it. Not interested. Um, and when you're not interested in something like that, it's hard to devote your entire self to it. Right. So I was trying to find my place within this group of basically just real estate investors and real estate agents and entrepreneurs. And um, I got to know the guy who founded the group and he started knowing me and he saw that I have all these other talents that I didn't feel like really fit into this group anywhere. Like like it was like I was bifurcated. There was like me <clears throat> over here and then there was me in this group that had no skill no ability, no knowledge in anything they were talking about. And I was like, just lost. So I was talking to him about it and he was like, well, you know, I need help writing this book. And I'm like, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. Nice. <laughs> you know, like, well, it, it, it first started out just as sort of a, editing the book that he'd already written. And then he asked me to ghost write a book, um, a, the next book for him. And then he's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> Like you're starting a ghostwriting business um, and I'm going to have, I've got a couple of clients. Here's, here's how you're going to run it. Here's how, what you're going to do. I mean, he's, he's a very successful business person and I'm not, I've tried to start a, a bunch of businesses before on my own. Great businesses. They didn't work out because I'm not a business person. I didn't know anything. So he was just basically, I mean, he's just basically taking me by the hand and held and said, okay, step one, step two, step three, this is what you're doing. Okay. And he's like, and now you have to systematize it. I'm like, oh, and he's like, so that you can get bigger. And so one day he's like, and you know, any, any, any client that I send your way, I'll just, you know, I'll just take, you know, 20%, whatever. And I was like, oh, well, I think that actually you should take 50% of everything because I'm not doing anything besides writing. <laughs> you know I mean? like, wow. You're doing everything else. And he's like, oh, okay, well, now that I'm a 50% partner, I'm even more interested in, in making this business um, successful. So we're, we've really gone all in on it. And um, we've come up with a great system to help people. And the, the, the work that we're doing is um, aimed at professionals 
who help other people service for service people. So like coaches, um, but also real estate investors and attorneys and hard money lender guys and um, professional, more personal transformation people, anybody who's who reaches out and needs a client base and has something to teach. So the book is, is like a teaching aid, but also it gets uh, more visibility for the person. It, it establishes a credibility that they wouldn't have been able to establish otherwise. Um, it gets them onto more podcasts and stages and it starts building your relationship with your potential client before you even meet so that's what he saw the need for in the, in the world that he inhabits and i just so happened to be able to do that <laughs> that's amazing yeah it was literally an answer to a prayer is the short is the short answer it was literally an answer to a prayer that's amazing and so now so now you ghostwrite books for people so yeah. I, if I come to you and say, you know, I have this this business experience or this this message to share, then we discuss it and you write it. Um, we discuss it. <laughs> so it's it's kind of it's it's a very interesting format. So we discuss it. We we Walter would be in on it too because he's he's the business genius and he'll be able to really see an angle um, that would be the best strategy business wise for what for what should be included in the book, <clears throat> but. There's like the middle of the book is like six principles, six things that you teach, right? Maybe there's six, the six modules of your course. Maybe they're just six things that you got to know to be a good real estate agent. Um, and then the first part of the book is mindset. And the last part of the book is empowerment. So we work together um, and I find the right questions to ask to get the right information out of you, the, the your ideas, your knowledge and your personal stories that will be relevant and that will engage people. Um, and yeah, I, I, I basically gather all that stuff from you and then put it into a book and write it as, as much in your voice as possible. That's, that's wonderful. That's it's wonderful. And, and so interesting about voices. So are you, uh, do you write for Americans mainly? No, what we do actually, when I say your voice, I, as, as literally as possible as I can mean this in mm. a written situation. <laughs> I mean, your voice, I, we, our interviews are, I ask you questions and um, you answer them in an audio format. So I take that, that I get it, I get it transcribed. I take the information and I arrange it in the best way, like the most logical way to go through it. But then as much as possible, I use your words. Yeah. And, and I put it into you know, the way you would, the way you would express it. I mean, I elevate it a little because you want it generally slightly more elevated than conversational tone. Although personally, I like conversational tone as much as possible because I, I feel like that makes you relate to the person much more. Yeah. Um, but if, if I were to write it for someone in the UK, I would, I would change, you know, the OUs and, <laughs> you yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, and there is a different dialect. There, there are different expressions, and yes, yeah, there are, there are different language patterns, which is which is why I ask that because uh, I very often, you know, my corporate world, I will be you know emailing with somebody. Uh, well, this is before the 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 kind of widespread of Zoom and Google Meets mm -hmm. and so on. But but you know, people would say you make so much more sense when I've met you because now I understand the dialect of your emails which is really quite funny that is funny yeah and it, and so and so i think i think you know being able to hear somebody's voice by the, because those words that we use that the language that we choose is is so important to how that's connected to how we're storing it in our own brain so true and honestly even just storing it in our own body too with the way you say something <clears throat> excuse me as an actor this is something we study too. Um, the way you say something, your inflections give give words completely different meanings. So if I'm listening to you and I hear the inflection, it's going to be completely different from not completely, but it could be could be interpreted completely differently from the written word, right? So that's something I'm working on too. Is like okay, I got to make sure it means what she she means it to mean, you know? Yeah, and it sounds like that person exactly. So I get I get accused quite often because I'm Canadian, but I live in the UK, and the effect of the two accents together is I get I get uh, asked if I'm Irish a lot, like every single day of my life. 
So I was hosting a, a, a jazz and soul evening last night in an event and I, people were saying, oh, are you Irish? And I was saying, no, I'm really not. <laughs> and they were Irish. And I was thinking, okay, that's, that's funny. interesting. Because there's different expressions that I use that are UK based, but then mm -hmm. I, there's just the mix of the, the accents. And that is so important because I'm not completely Canadian and I'm not completely British, which is why I asked that question about, you know, our voice. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I always think of, you know, did you ever watch Schitt's Creek? No, I haven't. I'm with with um, Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara. Yeah. Oh, the first thing that. that's your homework. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> down. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I uh, it's 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 one of my favorites of all time. Um, and I get accused of being Moira Rose quite a lot. And oh yeah, Catherine O'Hara's part because I say things and I say things quite with different emphasis. Than, than the people that are surrounding me in the UK and they're, you know, cause there's obviously yeah. he's Canadian. I'm Canadian. So there's some, there's some expressions that I use or some, some emphasis that I put on words that is quite different to the UK. And then they say, oh, you sound like Moira. I had to watch this Greek because. I, I, I think I'll have to watch that. <laughs> well, it's interesting too, because your, your, your accent that's part Canadian, but also the, the British part isn't what, I mean, as an American, you would think typically British, right? Like it's more of a, like kind of a West country, Southern kind of accent than it is for like the proper RP or even Cockney or something like that. Yeah. Definitely not Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> no. Oh no. Oh no. Dick Van Dyke no. is the gra greatest example. Oh my goodness. Very yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> So oh my goodness mm -hmm. I, I love that i love that we've gone from like really serious adulting <laughs> right, right. very poppins <laughs> <laughs> oh blimey governor <laughs> That's amazing. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. And the in-betweeners has a lot to answer for, for, for Americans learning the, uh, the, the British lingo. It's quite right. Funny. Right. But uh, yeah, so that's, so that's interesting. And then, so, so, okay. So then you write the book I and do, then yeah. you mm -hmm. also publish it or do you we help, they, we'll, get it done or we, um, we help publish it. So we will, we'll do it on Amazon, which is uh, sort of a print to order kind of service. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you have to order like 500 or whatever. And we, we don't just like let you loose at the end where, you know, we can help set you up with that. Um, but again, I mean, we were talking about like, there's, this is a good option for people who either don't have the time, don't really know where to start, don't have, feel like they have the skill, don't have the confidence. But the key there is to know, to have the confidence that you know what you know, and that you have a message to impart, you know what I mean? Like that you can actually change someone's life just by being who you are and telling your stories, you know? That's a different kind of confidence to have. It's a whole different kind of confidence. And I think, you know, storytelling has always been there, you know, oh. before writing and like you the know. word storytelling gives me the goosebumps. I'm so, it's like it's like my main my main life. Storytelling is the most amazing thing in the world. And people don't even realize that like we are we are the storytelling animal, right? <laughs> We are. We really are. And I know you have a lot of stage experience and that's telling a story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, making all art, all art is about telling a story in one way all, or another. All art is absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, I think, you know, for a long time before, before we really fully embraced the internet, we, you know, we, we kept our stories to ourselves or, you know, some of us wrote books, obviously, and some of us shared them kind of locally, mm -hmm. but that ability to have that global reach of your story. Mm -hmm. So powerful. So powerful. And, you know, it's funny for anybody who's lacking confidence and, and, and putting themselves forward, because that's, that's a big issue. Like we were talking about, like that people want to be accepted or whatever people feel shy. They don't feel confident. They don't feel like they have enough to share. Um, I would encourage you to go look at some of my Facebook lives because they're ridiculous. I, I just, I just, if I can put my, my emotional, whatever. So what, what I do is I, I, as someone who's depressed, I'm learning to deal with emotions in a, in a healthier way. Mm -hmm. So when, especially when something comes up that I had an issue with, that would be a trigger. Like yesterday there, I had like a big shame spiral. It was awful. You know what I mean? So I went on camera 
And I'm like, this is what I'm feeling. This is why I'm feeling it. This is what it feels like in my body. I don't know how to handle this right now because when, you know, <laughs> a year and a half ago, I would have gone to bed for three days, you know, or more. And it would be something that bothers me to the end of my, the end of my life. I would be thinking about it when I'm 75, like, oh, I can't believe I did that. Like, you know what I mean? Like those are the things, but that's not how I want to live my life anymore. And anybody who does that, and I know there are a lot of people out there who do that. I want them to see like, okay, I know what you're talking about. I'm not like, like just saying I went through this stuff. You can see I go through this stuff. And then, you know, an hour or two later when I figured it out or the next day or two weeks later, whenever I figure it out, I come on and I talk about that. And if I can do that, if I can be like, anybody can do anything. It's whatever. It doesn't matter. You can tell your story. If, if I just sit there and I cry and talk about how ashamed I am of myself, anybody can go through talking about whatever they need to talk about. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it makes us human and it makes us feel it, it kind of, it makes us be able to connect and say, Oh, that's okay. Cause I, me too, but I didn't know that I was allowed to talk about that. Exactly. That's, that is so, that's what, that's what's so important about emotional stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like people don't know there's such a stigma, especially, I mean, especially in a culture like, like, the UK, you know what I mean? Like, and in America culture too, I, I come from an Irish family, uh, an Irish ascendancy, you know, you know like an ancestry ascendancy, <laughs> both, um, you know what I mean? Where, where there, it's very close to the best, you know what I mean? Like you don't talk about emotions and if you have an argument, you don't, you calm down, you go away, you calm down and then you pretend like it never happened. You know what I mean? Like any emotion, you pretend that like it didn't happen and that messed me up. <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh my goodness, yeah. I my 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 mother's voice is in my head with what will people think? Mm -hmm. And and what cabaret taught me is I don't care. Right. If you, if, if if you if you, if there's if there's an adverse effect to me sharing my truth and how painful or difficult it is, and you suddenly don't like me or what or think worse, it's, then then you're not the person that I need in my life anyway. That's your problem. If you have a problem with me, you have the problem. Exactly. Because I'm just going to go be, be me. And I don't have a problem with that because that's who I am. And I, honestly, if I want to live a full, happy life, I'm just going to have to accept who I am and be that be the best me I can. And if you have an issue, you have the issue. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Because they can choose. They can choose not to hear it or not to yeah. listen to it. Go or somewhere not to... else. Do something else. Exactly. Don't listen to me. If you don't like hearing me be sad and talk about my emotions and you want to tell me get over it, that's fine. Go ahead. Like, it, you don't get it. And that's your problem. If you have a problem seeing me talk about whatever I'm talking about, I'm sorry for you, <laughs> but you don't yeah. have to listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think you know we're 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 in the midst of you know spiraling into this mental health crisis that you Especially know with the COVID and people stay oh and everything that's going on right now it's so scary. Yeah, there's people a lot of people questioning like. I was doing this stuff and I didn't question it. And now I am because I had to stop doing it. And now what do I do? It, it, it just is a huge thing. And I think on top of that, there were already huge, you know, it, subjects oh, yeah. that we didn't talk about. We didn't talk about like aging females and how they're just kind of discarded. And I know, and, right? Oh, you people. have a couple of wrinkles on your face? Ow! <laughs> yeah. Not beautiful and anymore. Yeah. Every female that I've talked to, when I talk about, you know, not taking up space or sh making ourselves small, they go, yes. Yeah. You have to apologize for yourself. Yeah. yeah. That's something I've, I, something that's uh, kind of come into my life in an, an emphasized way recently with my mother. She, you know, she just suffered a stroke. It was minor. Thank God. And she's doing very well. But even more so than she was before, she's apologizing for herself every every five seconds, and it's heartbreaking. It's like, what do you? Don't don't you you're you have every right to exist. <laughs> you have every right to have what you to be going through what you're going through. You know what I mean? Like, it's heartbreaking, and it's 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 difficult to watch. Women need to learn not to apologize for themselves just for existing, just for having an issue. Yeah. Or, or just for just for trying and not succeeding. We're not told to do those things. You know, you've mm -hmm. talked about money. Um, I, I think for a lot of us, 
you know, we were kind of told, well, don't worry about it because you'll get married. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> you'll get married. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, and yeah, that's, your husband will know how to do that. Who also probably know how to do that. Sorry. And, yeah. your, and your husband might not have learned how to do that. I, you know, for me, it wasn't even a matter of, it was, yeah, it was, I grew up in a relatively, I mean, compared to most people on earth, a very aff like affluent and, and privileged lifestyle. And I didn't have to worry about money. I didn't have to think about money. Um, my mom took care of all the financials and she never really showed me how to do it. You know what I mean? And, and so to me, like, I mean, and honestly, like, I don't, like I would go to the mall and my mom would hand me a $20 bill. And back in 1992, <laughs> 20 bucks was like 50 bucks. <laughs> it was like okay money's just there whenever i need it you know oh wait wait what what <laughs> yeah wait, what? Where did it come from? wait a second and i mean i always i always i've always had a vision of my life as an actor it never occurred to me that i would be anything but a very successful actor when i grew up which was unfortunately derailed by the depression because i was doing relatively well but um i was on my way but the point is when that didn't materialize and my expectations weren't met on that scene and I wasn't making the money that I assumed that I would be making, I didn't know what to do. You yeah. know, like, okay, I'll get a car and I'll go drive for Uber, you know, okay, I'll get a job doing stuff that I can do, but it's not going to pay me that well, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. 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 And then your, your confidence just takes a dive from there. You know, if, if there's something like that, I mean, if you can't handle yourself as an adult financially in this world, as a woman, like, I mean, I'm sure it's it's just as difficult as a man. I, I, anything, anybody who can't handle themselves financially is considered a failure and that will just kill you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think there are a, a lot of things that kind of the Gen X needs to, has probably even passed on to millennials um, that that we need to unpick and change, you know, and and even I mean, because I've got millennial children and then I've got a Gen Z child, and and I I need I I have to go back and kind of go, okay, there was some stuff there that I programmed in you. I didn't know I was doing it because I was doing my best, but yeah, we need to unpick some of that. Let me help you with that because it's flawed. Yeah, like, whoops, <laughs> do over. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, I didn't I even, when my husband passed away, I didn't know how to mow the lawn. And we had a really big garden <laughs> and pasture. And I, I didn't even know how to start the lawnmower because my brother mowed the lawn and I weeded and raked and didn't mm -hmm. like, and so there were definite roles, right? And that was because one day he would have a lawn of his own, right? right. And I wouldn't, or, but I would have a husband. Yeah. Right. <laughs> have done the same and he, and he would mow the lawn yeah and that's what happened that's what, then, what your expectation was all of a sudden i was like oh i don't know how to mow the lawn. i don't even know how to start the lawnmower luckily my youngest is quite um adept at figuring stuff out and he was in canada and i had to phone him and have a facetime call with him to figure out how to use the lawnmower. Oh my goodness. Because I didn't want to ask people because I was like, but I'm an adult. I'm supposed to know this stuff. Yeah, this is right. ridiculous. No way am I going into my little gossipy village and saying, <laughs> you know my lawn. Villages. That's why one of the things I love about the UK so much. <sighs> lives in a village. Everybody knows everybody in their little village. It's so great. Yeah. There was no way I was asking that. Right. Um, and, it, and it really kind of started, it was that that made, made me go, Okay, what else did I not learn? Because I was the girl. Right. So that's not true in every family or in every culture, but the, but there is truth that you got some information and not others. And yeah. money shouldn't be a secret. No. I mean, I, but you're right. You know what I mean? Especially, I mean, maybe even less so in our generation and the generation um, and the Gen X stuff, like, women at that point were out in the workforce and learning stuff like that but we were taught by our mothers you know what i mean who maybe began working outside of the home but certainly mm -hmm. the roles had not changed and the roles yeah. only slightly changed when we came we became adults you know what i mean like so okay certainly much more than 
a woman working in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, my, my mom worked outside the home, but just like yeah. was my mom was a teacher. Yeah. 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 My mom was a teacher as well. And so there were certain roles that you had. Oh, which, and she had everything and she could go to work, but she had to come home and do everything there too. Yeah. 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 And to this day, women are at least 30% more, you know, are, are doing 30% more of the home, even when they're out working as well. And yeah. the truth is that even if you have a very hands-on partner, uh, male partner that, 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 that are involved in childcare, that they're, they're less involved in childcare. Oh well, yeah. And they don't expect to be as, you know what I mean? Like, well, when my kids were young, I worked all the hours and I worked mm -hmm. it around being there at all of their school things. And I did all the thing. Mm -hmm. But but my husband at the time was getting all this. Oh, it's amazing that you're here at the <laughs> school play or the parents night. And I was like, hold on. I'm at every one of them and I'm working 60 or 70 hours a week. What the hell is going on? Right. Like, why is he getting all this praise? But yeah. I mean, if you like thinking about it, you always want to praise someone for doing something so they do more of it. You do, but I wasn't getting that. And I, oh, I was still doing agreed. more. Of it. <laughs> but you were already, well, you were already doing it, I guess is the point. Like yeah. we were, we're already doing it. So if we praise the guys, maybe they'll like want to do it a little bit more. True. Yeah, that's true. But, but I, I love what you're saying about, you know, money because money is energy and that's something I, that we need to teach people. Yeah. Money is, energy. Money is not the root of all evil. It's not. And you it's not a bad person. If you have money, <laughs> it's not a, a like a, a, a commodity. I mean, it is a commodity obviously, because that's how we treat it in the patriarchy. Mm, that's another mm -hmm. podcast. Mm -hmm. um, but, <laughs> but, I'd be happy to talk about that later too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we'll need a part two, but it, it's an energy, right? And it's, right. and it, it, it's something that we don't talk about in that way. And so our, our limitations around money, uh, our um, inability to talk about it or, you know, to, to pretend that we've got lots of money and then end up in huge amounts of debt or whatever that is, it's, it's not going to get better until we start talking about it. Yes. That it's so, I mean, it really needs to be taught in schools. Financial literacy needs to be taught in schools because it's just, I mean, when you come from a, a place, everybody comes from a different place, you know what I mean? And we all have our, our struggles that come along with that. Yeah. I didn't know that money didn't grow on trees. <laughs> like, I didn't, you know what I mean? Like certainly I was always told that money didn't grow on trees and I knew that theoretically I couldn't go to the money tree outside, but it, it, it didn't really, really sink into my brain that it could not be there one day. Yeah. And, and it's the same with scarcity, you know, people who grew up with scarcity of money mm -hmm. have that kind of fear of it all is going to go away. Mm -hmm. and, that, the and that's, that's the same when we talk about mental health, because that comes and goes. That's the same when we talk about physical health, because that comes and goes, you know, and we, and we don't prepare ourselves or our children for those moments. When it and goes. we don't teach teach people or ourselves how to stay how to become healthy in all those in those areas and how to stay healthy in all those areas so that when the you know covid hits and there's nothing you can do about it at least you you've got your immune system up to as 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 good as it can be you know what i mean like your body is as healthy as it can be your financial system state is as healthy as it can be like we need people to know like hey buy some assets <laughs> Yeah. Don't just save it in the bank because it yeah. will go. Yeah. You know, or buy some therapy or whatever it is that you yes. need. If that's what you need, there yes. is no shame in that. It's actually the best thing you can do. There's, there's shame in, in not shame. I don't like to use, I mean, shame is very specific, but you know, there's, there's, it's silly if you don't get the help that you need. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's how my imposter syndrome, uh, has shown up for a long, long time is not wanting to ask for help, which is why I couldn't ask anybody how to mow the lawn. Mm -hmm. uh, I just couldn't. I, I didn't. I, and even if it was offered, I couldn't accept help. Mm. That's, a, that's, that's a tough one. Yeah. And until, until everything disappeared and it did, you know, my children grew up, my husband died, my, I, I lost my home, all the stuff until everything. And then I lost my health because I had neck and back injury. Then I, 
once it was all gone, that's when I learned the hard lesson. That's yeah. That's when you learn the lessons, right? And if, if we could do that sooner, that would just be so much more healthy because we would have strategies and resilience for it. If you can teach people, bringing it back to the box, <laughs> if you can yes. teach people from your own experience, the lessons that you've learned, like, hey, when my husband passed and my kids had left and I got into this car accident and everything left and I, I learned these things that if you learn now, you don't have to wait until that happens to you. Yeah. And if it were to happen to you, you know what to do now. Exactly. And I love that you are helping people put their message out there, share their learnings and their stories. Because stories. stories, stories are, I mean, it, it's key to have human, human evolution, human, human resiliency and, and human just our existence, honestly, like, hey, I was in the woods the other day and this bear came along and, you know, Grog over there ran away and the bear got him. But I went like this, Rawr! and the bear ran away. So maybe you guys, if you come to a bear, you should do that too. You know, that's how we learn. That's how that's how humans learn. Yeah, we've got the experiential learning firsthand, and then we've got the experiential learning for, from the second hand. And I mean, that's how that's how human society was built. You know, that's how we got to the moon. That's that's how we have the electric car that we've had since the eighties, but the patents were suppressed by the oil companies. Um, you know, yeah. that's, that's how we got there. <laughs> There's another podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a different one. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like that's, how, that's every advancement we've made in society is by telling each other our stories and what we've learned, you know? Yeah. So that's the greatest thing you can do. If, especially if you feel like you've gone through a hard time, the way to make it worth it. Like for me, the way that, 10 years I lost in the depression, the way I can make that okay with myself is to share how I'm getting past it. Amazing. You know, I mean, like, sorry, that's like, it's, that's a very personal thing to me because I lost 10 years. Yeah. But you know, maybe you didn't lose it. That's how I'm trying to see it now. You know, like, mm -hmm. okay, I can use this. I can help other people who are in the situation and maybe they don't have to lose 10 years. Maybe they can see that there's actually hope that they can actually get out of this this mental state that they've they, they've gotten stuck in you know and maybe they brought you to where you really were meant to be that's yeah exactly like here right now on this podcast <laughs> yeah and helping others share their stories because what you don't get to see in in that line of work is what impact you helping someone share their story had for other people Yes. Yes. So and I just I, like to let me that. write a book. It might help, you know, I, thousands and thousands of people, but, but you helped you, you were the, you were the catalyst for that working. And that happening. excites me. That, that's very exciting to me. Like just, I mean, it, it'd be nice to be able to see, but it's just, a, it, it's an exciting thought that I could help people who I don't even know who I would never normally be able to help because I don't have that experience. <laughs> I don't have that knowledge, you know what I mean? But I was able to write it for this other person who did. And now that's out there into the world. And it wouldn't have been if you didn't do that. So I think it's wonderful what you're doing. Thank you. And I think it's just, maybe it's not where you're meant to be forever, but it's where you're meant to be right now. Right now. It is. And, it definitely is. And, and that's it. That's all there is. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have met you. Exactly. And I love that we've met. Me too. This is very okay. cool. All right. So a few, a few kind of rapid fire questions uh, okay. before we wrap up. So, so you're about to go on stage in cabaret mm -hmm. uh, and cabaret could be singing, dancing, uh, comedy, um, uh, contortion, aerial, anything, it, you know, it, cabaret is usually just a small venue. Um, and you're going to go on stage. What, what, what are you going to perform? Like what, how, what kind of cabaret would you like to do? I think I would be like a combination story time with burlesque. <laughs> wow. That would, be, I mean, that would be my thing. Burlesque is story anyway, but I yes. would love that. So you yeah. do, so you tell some story and then as yeah, I oh, illustrate it through my body. Oh, I love that. That's definitely what I would do. Okay. And besides a microphone, you can have one prop. What would you want? 
out in this burlesque stage that I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> a boa, a feather boa. <laughs> I love a boa. I've never mm. performed with a boa. I've I've played with boa. I've done lots of classes mm. and and things. I love boas. I've never I've never done any of this. I really I've I've wanted to do burlesque for a very long time. It's very freeing. I'm gonna have to come over to the UK, and you're gonna have to teach me. Yes, <laughs> it's very it's very emotional. Mm. It's very cathartic. It looks that way because you're telling you you are telling your story, and you are. You are owning your space unapologetically. Yes. But yeah. boas are thick. I mean, they are thick, like a good boa. Yeah. Right? You can get the chicken feather ones that are like no. this, and they shed everywhere. And yeah. That's what I have. But but proper boas, mm -hmm. when you wrap yourself around it, it's it it's it covers so much, but you can flow and move. That's with what it. I want. And it lets you take <laughs> even more space than your arms could ever reach. Yes, and it's just ostentatious and, and colorful and yeah, yeah. Wow. And what would your stage name be? Oh. <laughs> ah. What do they what do they say? What the your first animal your first pet's name and the the name of the street that you first <laughs> <your> <laughs> name. I would be I would be Misty oh, Ellis. <laughs> also another podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay but you already know you already know what that fierce voice inside you is called what is I it i do her name is shira <laughs> i think i'm shira no oh, you're shira i love that yeah i think welcome to the stage shira <laughs> Might have to do something about the the Castle Grey Skull and He Man and all that Skeletor. Oh, no, oh, no, you don't get to apologize or explain. Okay, all right. No. Like you, like that's the thing. It doesn't matter if there's other ones or other contexts or other. You don't have to explain anything, because that's part of showing up unapologetically. Yes, that's true. I feel like that's the first name that came into my head, but I feel like there's something else. There's something deeper and more luxurious sounding. Okay. I'm not quite sure what it is, though. So I um, I debuted last week uh, with a new persona. Oh, tell um, me. Because I, so I was Helen back for several years. Uh -huh. And it was very, very cathartic about, you know, all the hell that I'd been through. Everybody called me Helen anyway, because, I don't know, for some reason here in the UK, whenever I say Heather, they say, okay, Helen, every day. <laughs> <laughs> never fails even if i sign off my emails with heather they still they send me helen. Back going, dear helen it's, i don't understand it but it's a thing and so i decided i was just going to use helen and embrace it mm -hmm. and that became my facebook name and that became my stage name and i used helen back because mm -hmm. it was my story of you know my abusive marriage and my full-time caring in in my second marriage and just the, all of it and so it was very angsty and angry and stompy mm -hmm. and and I didn't want to be limited by that and so I changed to also Helen so I am also Helen which has a lot of different tones of voice to it because I'm also Helen and then, <laughs> you know, well I'm not Helen what, what <laughs> I'm like yeah I'm also Helen uh and then uh and then and then it's just my you know kind of it, it's just my story of you know I'm lots of things but I'm also Helen and that's my mm -hmm. story uh, on my stage name. So, so that means that I can be anything. That's and yeah. You can everything, you can be everything. And exactly. also Helen. <laughs> exactly. I can, I, yeah, exactly. I can be sweet. I can be filthy. I can be bitchy. I can be whatever I want, but also Helen. Yeah. So it's fun. It's very meta. Um, <laughs> and it started because I was in a graveyard with my co-pioneer, Ryan Francis, who uh, we, we were walking around during during COVID and we were planning Confidence Through Cabaret and stuff. And there was this graveyard. Uh, it was a cemetery, actually, but it is very old. And we, you know, in the UK, we have, you know, 
obviously very old. Very old, yeah. <laughs> um, like 110. <laughs> yeah, by, 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 by North American standards, it's very, very old. But but it's and so there was this there was this um, headstone and it had this uh, this man's name and beloved father and all these things and and this and this little write up about them and and their years of living and then it and then on the bottom it said also Helen. And I was like, what? Hmm. Were they like a uh, drag queen? Did they, did they, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, like, what, were they also, like, did they have this alter ego, like, 200 years ago? <laughs> what? Uh, and, of course, it wasn't. It was just their beloved wife who didn't get a write-up. because right. it wasn't also, yeah. the, also that lady. Also, also that lady. Wife. Might as well just be also his wife. <laughs> yes. Also, also somebody else is buried here, too. Yeah. Uh, and I went. Oh, that's me. I'm like, I, I'm like that. That this just speaks to me because I'm, I'm angry about this, and I, mm -hmm. and I have things to say about this, about you know, women's place and women's story and women's voice and power and so on. Mm. And that's where that came from. That's so, I love that story. That's yeah. a great story. It's fun, and it's um, and it's also how just ridiculous my mind works. Because I was like, "Oh my goodness, this was a drag queen two hundred years ago." <laughs> yeah, I love that. And then Ryan like, "No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no." That's the the, the underappreciated wife. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's where that came from. But I really genuinely believe, and we we started Confidence Through Cabaret right away with what we called the All Caps Challenge, which was finding the character or avatar or persona, however you want to see it inside of you that is fierce and strong and driven and can do anything unapologetically. And, and so we asked everybody, what's your stage name? And it's interesting how many people sort of go, mm, I don't know. Yes, you do. I can see it in your face. It's there. You know, <laughs> and, you know and, it, and you might play with it a little bit. You might become, you know, Madam She-Ra. You might become, you know, Queen She-Ra. You, know, <laughs> you might, you, might it, it, you know, expand on that. But you know who that voice is. And when I can't do, when I feel weak and I can't do something, I ignite that voice and go, no, I am motherfucking hell. <laughs> Uh, I'm from Boston, sweetheart. We live in the really <laughs> that way. I know we do. <laughs> and I, everyone's, I don't know what happens every time I start talking to you. I'm like, no, I'm here. <laughs> I'm not having it. Yes. <laughs> and you said that to me before, but I'm from Boston. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I can swear. That word is an adjective. It's an adverb. It's a noun. It's a verb. Oh, it's really? everything. You could say I, an entire it, sentence. It, it, you get so much, yeah, exactly. You get so much power from language. And when you can connect with that, yes. if you are Shira, unapologetic and fierce and strong, you can do anything. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Because you know what? We do that. We do that with our imposter voice, right? We talked about this, you know, in, in past conversations. We you, we do that all the time with these other doubtful voices. They go, "No, you can't. No, you can't. What are you doing?" So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Shira, Shira, Shira can do anything. Shira with a boa. I mean, I'm picturing <laughs> like a cobra. Oh, fabulous, right? Just luxury. Wrap yourself in it, and like, mm, yeah, amazing. Okay, so what is your favorite lesson that you've ever learned? Oh, there's so many. Um, I think it's, we were talking a little bit about it. Like if someone has a problem with you, it's their problem. Nice. Nice. Lovely. Love that. And where can people find you? They can find me on Facebook um, at Jennifer Sullivan, which is a very common name. <laughs> but um, I, we can put my um, Facebook thing, but you could also attach, uh, you could also send me an email at jenspenbooks at gmail.com. Jen's Pen's Books. Jen's books Pen with an S? Books with an S. So it's Jen's, J E N S, book, Jen's Pen's, ah, Jen, J E N S P E N, books at gmail.com. There we go. 
Yes. Absolutely. Perfect. All one word, but yes. All one word. Yes. Mm -hmm. I try and space it out on here because then it, it like the people can actually people see remember. It. Yeah. Obviously, if you're listening to some podcasts, there's no apostrophe on Jen's, even though there would be grammatically. It's Jen's pens, all one word. Oh, Jen's pens books, all one word. At Jen's pen, sorry. Jen's pen books. Jen's pen. Why am I looking at the pens with an S? What the heck? <laughs> I don't know. I've got one pen and only one. <laughs> you only have one pen. Well, that's cool. That's yeah. Okay. So Jen's not Jen's pens. Jen's pen. Jen's pen. Want, oh. Everyone wants to say that though. Maybe I should change it to Jen's pens. <laughs> no. Do you know what I just realized? What? I did not get this. I can't believe I'm going to admit this on on live um, or on podcast. I did not get this. Because I always thought it was like a playpen. I love that. I like that even more. I, it never. Jen's playpen books. <laughs> I, I just, I never occurred to me like pen as in writing. I, uh, see, this is, this is another one of those. I love how your brain works. I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. Because I just thought, like, this is a place to play. It's a safe pen. <laughs> We're all locked in. <laughs> that means to me that it is an actual pen. It's an actual pen. I write with it. Unbelievable. How did I get a whole different... I, I even been in you. your community and talked to you in there <laughs> and still didn't get it. I love that about you. That's my favorite. Thing. That's, that's I love that your brain works that way. And Helen was a drag queen. Also uh, Helen from two hundred years ago. Clearly, a two hundred year old drag queen was buried here. Okay, okay. The power of the pen. Yes. Okay. I, I, it's I'm not even going to apologize because I love that for you. That the pen is double edged. Hmm. It's mightier than the sword. Mm. Very nice. Thank you, Jennifer Sullivan, for you, joining me in this pleasure. conversation, which I'm now going to split into two parts because we've talked a long time. An and <laughs> I'm again, not apologizing. I think it's fabulous that mm -hmm. you are so open to sharing and to encouraging others to share their story. And I think that's just a beautiful thing. Thank you. Please always remember how much impact you're having by helping others to share their story, to touch others. Thank you. That helps me a lot. Thank you. It's it's a pleasure to talk it's to you. So much fun. And we have about four more episodes that we've just planned during <laughs> this. So so we'll yeah, I will we'll do go back and re <laughs> yeah we'll go back and get, and get an update on Shira and how your boa is coming along. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Uh, Confidence Your Cabaret on all the socials. Uh, so Facebook, uh, Facebook community, YouTube, uh, where it depends where you're seeing this really or hearing this. Uh, obviously there's a podcast, Confidence Your Cabaret. Uh, join us anywhere where you'll find Confidence Your Cabaret. The only socials that I'm not Confidence Your Cabaret is Twitter, which is at YB y w y s and clubhouse i am at heather y b y w y s which stands for it is your body it is your world and it is your stage take up space and own it mm. thank you everyone thank you jennifer thank you hi bye